Hi there, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com and in this video, I'll be showing you how to create some sword combat sound effects by breaking down a redesign I did from the video game Ghost of Tsushima. So I actually took a little combat sequence, I redesigned it, put in all of my own sounds, and I'll show you layer by layer what I used, how I used it, how I processed it, so that by the end of this video, you'll be able to go uh, and use your own sound effects, record your own sound effects, and, and create your own sword sound effects. Uh, combat sound effects. All right, so before we jump into it, uh, if you are a sound designer, I have a little gift for you. It is my five layering techniques guide. Uh, this is a guide of different layering techniques that I use to create sound effects and other professionals use as well. So uh, if you want it, it'll be free. Links will be in the description below. All right, let's get into our project. All right, so here we are uh, within Reaper. Uh, and uh, this is the little sequence I have. Uh, and I, like I normally like to start, uh, I like to play you a bit of the original game audio so that we can listen to what uh, is in the actual game. And then I'll play you my redesign and then we'll go from there. So uh, for this video, actually, I won't be playing the whole uh, of the video here because there is some talking in there. So uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to play the whole thing, but I'll play a little clip so just we have some ideas of, of the quality of sounds and the types of sounds that are in here. So let's have a listen here. All right, so there's a little bit of the original game audio, and now let's have a listen to the redesign. One more time. All right, so that's the full redesign there. Uh, not very long, but uh, a lot to go over here. So why don't we start, uh, you know what? Let's start with something simple here, which is just gonna be the background ambience. I usually end with this, but I'll start with it here just cause it kind of sets the tone for the scene. Uh, obviously it's raining outside a little bit uh, dark. So um, what I did is I had a recording that I had done uh, from uh, at my house when it was uh, when there was some rain outside. So um, this is the recording here. And then what I did is I just added some track space around here and it's very low uh, ratio here. You can see it's at 9.5. And basically what I'm putting in there are all the sound effects all the, the weapon swings and metal impacts and all of that uh, is going through this channel so that it kind of, um, because I, I want those to be more important than the rain. So the rain is kind of a background thing. Um, but yeah, so, th so that's all that's doing there. Nothing nothing complex here. I recorded this with the Lom UC Pro's uh, microphones with my Zoom F6 and and that's it. So it's, it, um, it's just my own little recording I did here. All right, let's jump into some of these sound effects that I created here. So um, right, at the, right at the beginning here, I started off with this uh, with this sound. So let's have a listen to it and then we'll break it down. All right, so for these sound effects, for these like uh, sword uh, sounds, there's a few different layers that I like to use. Uh, so let's go over these. So the, the first one here that I use is this one and it's just a swing. So I don't remember what I swung here. I think what I did here was a, um, I had a metal pole and it kind of had like a hole in the middle. So it kind of created this uh, like tonal sound. So it sounded really nice. And so that, that is the swing sound. That's the swing portion. And again, here you can see I had a track spacer just so it doesn't mask any of the other elements in here. So I'm putting, I think probably this element through in here so that it doesn't mask it. So that's the first layer. Next one here we have some some sword sounds. So the way I created this was actually just scraping two knives together. And then also, I also had a, a knife impact. So I had like knives hitting knives together. And then, uh, so that's what I did. So I, I scraped them. That was like one recording and then the impact. And that was the other recording and put them together. And that's how I got this. So it, this is like, I, I, it's kind of a design design sound already. Uh, but I just kind of stuck it in here because it, it felt kind of nice. So we'll put it together. So you get the whoosh and then you get the metal uh, scrape impact. And then I, I just wanted to emphasize it quite a bit more. So here I have some other metal sounds. So again, this is emphasizing a bit uh, lower frequencies, lower pitch put together. Right, so you get, you get a fuller sound with that. And then you also have this one here. This is more of a, uh, it's, it's a, I guess I'm more of a blunt sound. So you get the, the sound of, of the, like you're hitting a, a, a metal, something that's, that's a bit harder and more blunt. 
right? So it just helps to, again, you're kind of filling out the frequency of the sound, help filling out, um, it makes the sound feel bigger. And then the last element here, and this one's kind of optional, it is a, a an impact sound, like a, a kick type of sound. So let's, let's have a listen here. So um, you can see here, let's look at some of the processing on the, I did on this. So I did some tweaking here because of probably some resonant peaks here. Let's have a listen. Yeah, you can hear there's like this a, a peak right at, at around 300. If I take it off, you don't hear it. Right, and then I just reduced some of the bass because it was probably a bit too bassy. Again here, putting tra uh, track spacers so that it doesn't clash with any of the other layers, no masking going on. And then that's pretty much it. So this layer, I actually created this using uh, a technique that I like to use to create new sound effects. I'll, I'll link it up in the cards above, but basically uh, I, I create a whole bunch of like weird sounds and then I go in, chop them up, and then I basically created a kick out of this. It's, well, a kick. I say it's a kick. It's like the uh, same idea. I was like, I'm pitching down uh, the sound really fast so you, you get kind of this impact sound and then I process it and stuff like that. Anyways, I'll put a link for the video if you're interested to see how I created this, but this is it here. It almost doesn't feel like it fits in the video, like in 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 the in the scene here. But if you so if you take it off, let's have a listen with it off, and then I'll, I'll put it back on so we can hear the difference. So that sounds okay. It sounds it sounds fine, but you're just missing the weight of, of the impact of the of of the hit. So with this on now, right, you really get that weight, and that 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 just helps to to make it punch you in the chest and makes it just sound so much better. So that's what that is doing there, and I did that for pretty much every time there was a sword hit or clang. All right, so that is that first sound. And you can see um, there's three elements that I like to use. Uh, there's the whoosh, there's the, 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 the metal scrapes, the metal hits, and then the, the kicks, or sorry, like four elements, I guess you could say, right? And you're gonna see this happening for all of these sword impact sounds. So that's, that's the first one here. Next one I'm gonna do is, the, they're gonna be the same thing. So let's have a listen to this one here. So this is the second one. Right, so again, I, I still want to have something similar. So we'll see here, this. Again, another wash sound. It's probably something similar from the same recording session that I did for the previous one. So it's just so there's that kind of continuity in sound, if you will. So there's that whoosh, and then here I have the metal impact. Again, that's more high frequency content right there. Sounds good. This one's more mid. And you can see here, I did have an EQ. Let's see what I'm doing. Yeah, so I'm just kind of reducing a bit of the lows here. So if I take it off, right, you, you, you have that sub bass. And I didn't really need it there because I knew I was going to add some sort of kick after that. Uh, so that's why I took it off from here. So now with these two, and then with the whoosh, right? And then finally, the last element here is going to be our kick, right? So that's that's the sound here. Again, it sounds kind of extreme. You don't need it. Technically, I'm saying need it. You don't need it. You could use some other kind of sub element here or some other cake or punch or impact sound here. But I find that these have been, uh, like these work really well. At least I like them. I like the, the style of them. Uh, but again, you, you could definitely experiment and, and try to replace it with different, uh, different like impact sounds here. So all together now we have this. Again, you can see here uh, similar elements here. You have your, your whoosh, two metal hits to fill out the frequencies of the metal. Uh, this one's more pitched down. And then, of course, you have your hit down here. Right, so now together with these two. Right, you have these uh, different pitches, different frequencies being accentuated, especially here. It's a bit lower. Then the second one here is going to be higher. Right, you don't want it to sound the same, so that's... that's, that's you can you can hear it obviously, and you can tell because I'm using different samples here. So, all right, let's move on to now the next uh, impact sounds here, which is down here. All right, so let's have a listen to this one here. So this one I started to uh, kind of change up a bit. So let's have a listen to what I have here. So uh, I'm pretty sure there's some other. I feel like there's missing a sound like right when it hits here. Okay, it's because this here is part of the fourth one, so I'm going to actually move this up into this fourth folder here. There we go. Okay. So that's the sound. Let's have a listen to these layers here. Again, this is a design metal hit. Uh, again, these are just swords that I took together, layered them up, pitched them down differently, and so they're just a bit basically stacked different sword impact sounds. Uh, sorry, by sword I mean knives. So I just recorded a bunch of different knives at my house, layered them, pitched them, 
and uh, put them together, sounds like this. So that's a cool sort of sound. Then here, I did something different. Instead of having a whoosh, I actually, or sorry, like a swing sound from like swinging stuff in front of my microphone, I actually used a whoosh. So the reason I did that, or at least my thought behind it originally when I was doing the redesign is that because now we're switching to the main character attacking, I wanted to have a different feel for the sound. I wanted to have a sound that was more aggressive, more powerful. Uh, so that's why I'm using a whoosh. It's, it's a bit fuller and a bit more uh, aggressive. At least that was my idea behind it. I'm, I'm not sure if it came across that way, uh, but yeah, that, that's how what I was doing here. So that's that right there. And then the last here, that's the last layer. Again, yeah, that, that, that kick that, that just kind of fills out the low end. If we look at processing for this one here, I have some track spacer and it's probably being, um, I, I pro as I'm probably using this layer here to cut through here or actually it might be both of them to go into here so that as soon as, as the impact hits, it ducks this whoosh sound because I just don't need it at that point. It's really, the whoosh is really there just to accentuate like the going into the, the sword impact. And then here, yeah, so I cut out a lot of the low. So if I take that out, it's really low. I really just needed that, that top swoosh portion. So all together now. So that's impact number three. That's from the main character. And then let's go into impact number four here. Here we go. All right, so here again, I use the same whoosh sound. Um, because again, like I said before, I want to make the character have a different kind of uh, power to it. Uh, so same processing is going on on this whoosh. But here, I used something a bit different, which was I recorded uh, some metal, again, knife sounds, but this time I wanted to use some that were ringing a lot. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have this final hit here where it kind of gets deflected, right? And it kind of lasts a long time before they keep attacking. And also, uh, just from the original uh, video, uh, I know we can't hear, but... Um, there was that, that that kind of like sword ringing sound. It was actually a lot more accentuated than this one, but that that's why I wanted to kind of imitate a, a similar uh, effect here. So let's have a listen to here. So that is the sound, the sword sound. And I have a few things going on here. I, I'm not sure I'm using this. Okay, yeah, so I am using this. I, I was using this to pan. I mean, I could have just used the, the pan. I don't know why I used this. <laughs> anyway, I used the plugin to, to pan the sound to the right uh, because the player moves to the right after the impact. Right, so the sword is kind of on the right. And I'm pretty sure I'm doing the same thing. No, I'm not doing the same thing there. Yeah, so that, that's what this is doing. Uh, here I have a filter. Just because I don't, I guess I didn't want the entirety of the sound. So if we take it off... No, it still sounds about the same. Uh, so it must have been because I really wanted to accentuate the frequency that is ringing, which is right here. So I found out where it was, put it, put the filter there and kind of did a small peak. It's really not very much, but it helps to bring it out a little bit. All right, next we have this one. So again, a lower frequency to, to match this higher frequency hit together. Good, and then lastly here. Again, another uh, impact. And you'll notice like every time I have a, a different like low kick or low impact sound, they're all a bit different, right? They're not sounding all the same because it, it, it just would distract the player's attention because it, it'd just be really obvious that everything is starting to sound the same. So they're all a little bit different. They're all have a different quality to them. And yeah, so now if I play all these the same, uh, sorry, all of these together, that's the sound. So again, you'll, you'll notice a similar thing. You'll have a whoosh or a swing. Some metal hits, uh, usually I have at least two, one for high frequency, one for low, sometimes I'll have three. And then I have some sort of kick to, to fill out that sub. All right, let's go over some of the um, some of the gore sounds. Uh, there was actually some more sword sounds, so, but what I did for these, they were actually already pre-made uh, pre sounds. So if we listen here, so that's the sound that I pre-designed. It's all baked into one. So actually already, I just dropped it in here. Same thing with this one here. But again, it's all the same uh, same kind of layers that I use, uh, just different different sounds, different uh, recordings that I did, and then put them in here. And in terms of like editing or uh, processing, I'm taking off a little bit of the low ends for these, probably because they're like way too bassy. I just didn't need it to be that much. And same thing with this last one down here. 
right? That was the final one. And this is kind of the final blow. And then we have all of these gore elements. And then, so let's go over some of these. So let's go over this one here. <laughs> so this one is just a sound that I made with my mouth. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just to kind of bring out some, maybe the characters like dying, but also as I tried to make it kind of sound like um, gory or like bloody or something like that. <laughs> So you kind of can't hear it, but it's it's in there. Um, the other sound I have here is so that's that's the final swing afterwards. So this is the final that's this is the first death blow. That's the second one. Again, everything is baked into these. And then I have this one here. So I guess this one I, I wanted to have more of a swing sound. So that's what that one is. So this is a whoosh that's helping to accentuate this. So without it. All right, all right. Let's actually go into some of these core sounds here because there's quite a few. So let's play it all together, and then I'll I'll break it down. All right. So let's go with this one here. So a lot of these I didn't actually design them, so I'm I'm just gonna play them and, and show you what they are. But these are all from a uh, library. I think they're I think they're from different libraries. Um, but yeah, so this is the first one here. So this is like the initial like slash, the 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 first like wound to to mark that he's gonna you know kill the player. So you have this deep sound here. You have some more blood tripping. So this is for like after the 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 wound sound. You have this one here. Right, that's the main body of the sound. Like if I take this off, you'll probably like you'll probably tell like it's very big. <laughs> Right, it sounds very bare. So this is like the, the main sound of, of the, the core. I kind of just dropped this in here as is. Uh, I think this is from Sound Morph. Uh, yeah, let's go to this one here. Again, this is an impact sound just to mark the hit. Kind of matches with that. Right, just very impact. Right, and then finally, when the body falls, I have another one here, which is this. So that's that's the final fall. Actually, let's, let's start from the bottom. So here we have, so there's two parts to this like the, this fall. There's the, when the player falls on it, on the knees and then on the ground. So I, I wanted them to to sound different and to have different weights to them, obviously, because they're not going to be the same. So when he falls on his knees, I, I, I need it to be a bit lighter. And then finally, when he falls here on the ground, it's going to be the heaviest fall. So here is the knee fall. And you can see there's two parts to it, the knees, and then when he falls on the ground, and you can hear both. And on here, I just put on some EQ just to cut out some of the lows because it's a little bassy, but that's it. And then after that, if we have this one here. So this one is to bring out some of the bass. So let's, let's actually take this off for now because I'm just going to focus on this one and then we'll bring it back in. And then this is the final body. And this is actually just some gore, like a gore sound effect, some gore juices and stuff. And uh, yeah, so I just cut out some of the lows here some of the highs to make it fit within the scene so it didn't sound so close to the player, so bright. So if I take this off, right, it sounds kind of really in your face a little too much. So that's why I did that. Uh, here, I added some uh, some other effects. Let's have a listen. So what I did is I just pitched it down a little bit. Here you can see 2.3, and that's it. So that's what this is doing here. Uh, yeah, just cutting out some of the lows, some of the highs, so it's not so bright, it's not so dark, and then... Uh, pitching it down a little bit. And then now with this one, I just felt like it was missing a little bit of bass. It's very subtle, but I added this in to fill in that that sub. So that's what that is doing there. Again, you can see here, I'm cutting out like pretty much everything here. So if I, if I put this at, uh, if I solo it by itself, with it off and with it on right so this is just like a kick sound I just wanted the sub part so that's what I did with the filter and that's pretty much it so these three together there you go so now if we play all of these gore sounds actually let's do everything together and then I'll, I'll go over this final element here So the final sound here that kind of brings everything together is this one here. And this is the sound of, of um, the, like the death strike. 
or what I'm calling the de- death strike is basically when he hits the player and the player basically is going to die. Right? You have this sub bass kind of ringing sound. And the way I created this, I'll actually show you over here. I uh, created these, uh, this long file. I'll show you here. So this is how I created it. So I opened up like faceplant here. I just put a sine wave on. Uh, sine wave on. I put on space uh, Valhalla space modulator, and you can see I'm using uh, Reaper's uh, modulation parameter, and I'm modulating all these parameters with like random amounts. So now when I'm playing, I also have portal on here. I picked a preset. That's the sound I'm getting. So I can play like across my keyboard. I probably played really low, and then I printed it out, and that's what you can see here. I printed it out. All right. So once it was printed out, then what I could do is bring it back into uh, Reaper and into Faceplant again, and this time I used um, a sampler. So I brought it in, used a sampler, and now what I can do is I can kind of search through the file here and then play across my keyboard to get some cool sounds. And that's how I found it. So if I look here and I play some sounds. Right, so I'm playing low on my keyboard right now, so I can get these. So some of them are way too tonal, way too high, but some of them sound really good. I'm kind of I'm using Uber Loud here just to make it a bit louder, but that's how I did it. So I, I, I exported a few of these, and one of them I brought back into my session here, and it was this one. So you can see there's there's no processing or anything. I'm just putting in a, a fade in and fade out, and that's it. And that's how I created it. So, yeah. So now once I had this in place, the last thing that was really obviously missing was some of the voices, which is just like, <laughs> it's just me doing some really bad voice acting. <laughs> right? Stuff like that. And then some footsteps. And these, I really didn't spend much time on them. I didn't really want to focus too much on the footsteps. Uh, I just put some here because it was really obvious during this quiet area. But uh, these are basically like milk bags that I was crunching around the microphone uh, that I had on my computer from one of my other libraries. And uh, yeah, so there's no processing. I just, I really dropped it really quickly. I could have spent a lot more and better time on these. Uh, but right, let's have a listen. That's it. So uh, super simple. And um, yeah, so let's have a listen over here for the full redesign now that we have uh, we've gone through all the layers. All right, so that is everything. I hope you found the video useful and valuable. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And just a reminder to grab that uh, that guide, Five Layering Techniques Guide. And also, if you're interested to see more uh, sword sound design, uh, I did make a video uh, a while back on uh, how to create your own custom sword sounds and sword swings. So I'll put that in the cards above here if you're interested in seeing that. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.